attending today's RDA webinar on what happened at the Montreal Plenary. I am Anne Jakobsen from the RDA Europe Training Program team. Now let me present you our speakers. Our first speaker today is Dr. Ingrid Dillo. She holds a PhD in history. She is a generalist who over the last 25 years has mainly been active in the field of policy development. After a period as senior policy researcher at the Research for Ballet in Leiden, she worked for many years as a senior policy advisor at the Dutch Ministry of Education, Culture and Science and at the National Library of the Netherlands. Ingrid is now deputy director at DANS. Among her areas of interest are research data management and the certification of digital repositories. Ingrid is a member of the International Board of the Data Seal of Approval and she is the vice chair of the scientific committee of the ICSU World Data System. She is a member of the technical advisory board of the Research Data Alliance and co-chairs the RDA World Data System Interest Group on Certification of Digital Repositories and the RDA World Data System Cost Recovery for Data Centers Interest Group. She has been an active member of the former RDA World Data System Repository Audit and Certification Data Seal of Approval World Data System Partnership. Ingrid is a member of the Board of Directors of the Dryad Repository. She also participates in the Research Data Expert Group of the Knowledge Exchange. Our second speaker today is Dr. Françoise Genova. She has been the director of the Strasbourg Astronomical Data Center CDS from 1995 to 2015 and one of the founding pa partners of the Astronomical Virtual Observatory project. She has been the coordinator of several European projects dealing with European Virtual Observatory. She currently leads the data access discovery and interoperability work package of the European Asterix Astronomy Cluster, which aims at optimizing the usage of the data from the astronomical large projects through the virtual observatory. She was a member of the high-level expert group on scientific data set up by the European Commission in 2010 and one author of the Riding the Wave report published in October 2010 and its follow-up data harvest report. She is an active member of the RDA, in particular as member of the RDA Technical Advisory Board and uh, of the RDA Europe projects. She has been a member of the Data Seal of Approval Board starting in January 2016 and has been a member of the World Data System Scientific Committee and Co-Data Executive Committee. Our last speaker today is PhD student Amy Meisen. She is a PhD student at Cypher Swansea University. Beginning in October 2014, her PhD project is investigating the impact of exposure to the retail food environment on child health using GIS and routine linked data. She is about to submit her thesis and will soon begin a postdoc position at Swansea University investigating whether spending time in parks, woodlands and beaches improves our mental health. Her research interests include accessibility modeling, health geographics, data linkage and open source. So let's start our webinar. Please Ingrid. Thank you very much, Anni. I will try to start my webcam so that you will also be able to see me. I hope this works. So first of all, welcome um, to everyone um, in this webinar. And I would like to thank you very much for the interest that you um, are showing in RDA and um, more specifically in um, what happened at our latest plenary last September in Montreal, Canada. Um, what I will do in the 15 minutes that I have um, to um, inform you is um, that I will take it a little bit more uh, generic and talk a little bit about RDA in general as well, um, because I could imagine that there are people on um, this webinar that are not that familiar. 
um, with RDA and of course I will also say a few words about what happened in, uh, in Montreal from my perspective. And um, Annie gave a long um, expose on, on, on what I am doing um, in my um, daily job. But um, I think the most relevant um, thing in this context is that I am at the moment acting as an interim secretary general um, for RDA. So I'm filling in the position for a couple of months until there is a, a permanent um, secretary general. And we hope to have um, a new person in that function as of the 1st of um, February. So um, let me start. Let me start first of all by um, taking you back to um, the basics of RDA. Um, the mission of the Research Data Alliance is to build the social and technical bridges that enable open sharing of data. And um, I think this is a very timely mission and a mission that is still very valid in, in this day and age where you see both government and funding agencies stretch, stretching um, the importance of open science and within that context also the importance of open data. And um, open data are only relevant if we have the capacity of also sharing them. So this mission of RDA um, is... Um, aimed at realizing a broader vision um, and this vision is not only aimed at research as you can see but also at industry and, and enterprise because it says that researchers and innovators um, should openly um, share data across technologies, across disciplines and countries to address um, not only scientific goals but more generally the grand challenges of society. So, what is RDA? RDA is a member-based organization and it's an international organization. And member-based means that any individual can become a member of the RDA community and um, for that you only have to register on the website um, so there is not a large barrier. Um, and among our membership we have um, of course a lot of researchers and scientists but also a lot of data science professionals all working to build these social and technical bridges to enable um, open data sharing. So here you see um, a nice slide with a couple of graphs um, showing you the um, continuous uh, growth of RDA membership right from the start um, in 2013. You see um, the steady rise in numbers and at the moment RDA, the RDA community counts over uh, 6,100 um, members, individual members. And these members, as you can see, come from 130 countries really around the globe. So RDA is a real global organization. When you look at the pie chart, um, it becomes directly clear that um, this global organization is only partially true um, if you look at the percentages of um, the regions um, involved. You can see that 50% of the membership of RDA comes um, from Europe, so um, that is a very large uh, proportion. Um, from North America we have one third of our membership and um, the other regions in the world are a bit less um, represented. And of course this has to do with the fact that the main funders um, of RDA right from the start were the European Commission and um, we also had several uh, grants in the US. And that explains that there has been more activity in these regions and that is reflected, I think, in the membership. So we still have work to do there. Here you see some graphs showing who the, um, the, the, the people are um, that are members for, um, of RDA. And you can see that the large majority comes from academia and research. But we also have a lot of people coming from government, from public services, from industry as well, and of course from um, policy organizations and funding agencies. A lot of them are researchers, but for example, we also have a lot of people um, that call themselves IT specialists, IT architects, and we also have a large um, number of um, representatives from the library world. Next to um, individual members, we also have organizational members, organizations um, that have an interest in RDA and have been willing to support um, RDA. We now have 43 of those organizations, and you can see their logos on this slide. 
And next to that, the RDA has an MOU with eight other international organizations that are more or less lookalikes of RDA in a sense that they are global and they are quite generic. So examples of that are ORCID, are um, the World Data System, CoData, etc. So what does RDA do? What do these um, over 6,000 people do in RDA? Um, these people um, are organized in a large number of working groups and interest groups. These working groups um, within RDA are groups that have um, a, a clear um, target. Um, they uh, have the aim to deliver um, a tangible output in a period of 12 to 18 months. They work together on a specific topic that has um, their mutual interest. Next to that, we have interest groups. They have a, a longer lifespan and they are um, also organized around themes or issues um, to exchange knowledge, um, to share discoveries, to exchange best practices, et cetera, et cetera. They are not so much geared towards um, coming up with tangible um, results in a short period of time. What we do see is that from these interest groups, um, working groups um, arise, um, focusing on, on sub-themes that are more concrete. So here you see a number of examples of themes uh, that we are dealing with uh, within RDA. This um, slide shows you, gives you a kind of an overview of um, the spread of, or, or the coverage of domains within RDA based on our membership. And you can see that the natural sciences and also engineering and technology are um, well um, represented. Also, the social sciences are, um, are there in, in, in a satisfactory way, I think. But we do need um, more input and more effort in the area of the humanities and also in um, the area of medical and health sciences. And uh, fortunately, we do see um, developments and progress there. Um, also in, in Montreal, we had a number of sessions around health and also um, a birds of a feather, a new session around uh, the digital humanities. So um, that is uh, very promising. You can also see on this slide that at the moment, we all in all have um, no less than 88 groups working um, within RDA, 30 of them um, are um, focused working groups, but the majority are interest groups um, with a longer time span and, and um, a wider scope. So what do all these working groups come and interest groups come up with? Um, they come up with what we call um, RDA recommendations or outputs. And these outputs can be quite diverse as we have seen up till now. They can be pieces of code and they can be policy recommendations, certain specifications or, or, or standard-like um, documents, and also, of course, um, all kinds of best practices in the area of, of data sharing. Um, at the moment, we have 18 of these flagship recommendations and outputs, and um, if you are interested, you can find them quite easily on the RDA website. If you go to the home page, um, you will find um, in the bar at the top of the page um, a button where you can click directly to um, the outputs. Um, so um, I think that is very worthwhile for everyone to have a look at. What we also try to do is to make sure that these outputs, of course, get adopted in the most broad and, and, and um, substantial way. And one of the ways that we um, have, um, one of the paths that we have chosen within European context is that we um, are now working to get um, RDA recommendations recognized and endorsed by the European Commission as their ICT technical specifications. And if um, RDA out get this um, endorsement, it makes it possible that these um, outputs are referenced in European public procurement. So um, that really is very important because it, it is important for the adoption of the outputs, but it's also important um, to promote interoperability, of course, and innovation. At the moment, four of the RDA recommendations have already um, been endorsed and we are now in the process to get um, five other recommendations from RDA um, approved by um, the Commission in this way. So that is a very um, interesting um, 
development uh, when it comes to um, impact of RDA and the adoption of its outputs. And this adoption of outputs is, of course, all aimed at um, making data sharing and data exchange uh, more easy, um, also improving discoverability of research data sets and, of course, more generally um, better research data management and stewardship. Within um, the RDA Europe project, um, there has uh, been um, so, um, some investigation into the adoption of RDA outputs up to now, and we have 75 adoption cases documented, and you can find a link on this slide if you want to have a look at that and see um, what communities and organizations have already adopted um, materials from RDA. So let's move to Montreal. Here you see a slide with an overview of um, numbers mainly. Um, you can see that we had in Canada over 430 participants um, present from 30 countries. And as you can see, um, the majority of them came from North America, as to be expected. But we also had um, a large um, crowd coming from Europe and also some people from other parts of the world. Um, at the plenary, we had in total 73 breakout groups, um, breakout meetings, so really working meetings from, for um, working groups as well as interest groups. And what was also very interesting is that we had no less than 16 birds of a feather sessions. And birds of a feather sessions are sessions um, where uh, first sessions around new issues or topics, um, and they are a kind of um, investigating sessions. And, Sometimes they lead to the um, setup of a new working group or interest groups group. Sometimes they are just a one-off thing. Um, but it's very um, good to see that there are still new ideas and still um, people um, coming up with new initiatives. Um, the poster session was also a big success, I think. We had no less than 60 um, submissions for posters and they gave a great overview of all um, the activity um, around the world in the area of, of research data. Um, another important topic that we discussed at the RDA plenary in uh, Montreal is um, the strategy of the RDA. Um, after uh, five years um, of um, RDA existence and um, 10 plenaries, um, it is really time for, um, for a change and for a forward-looking strategy for RDA because there are a number of issues at the table. Um, first of all, the issue of scalability. The RDA organization that supports all of the work of RDA um, has not grown um, from um, day one of RDA. And um, it is becoming more and more difficult to sustain uh, the whole effort on the basis of the governance structure and the, and the amount of people involved at the moment. So we need to come up with strategies for um, scalability. Another issue is um, the sustainability of RDA and the funding of RDA. What we see is if you want to have the organization in a, in a um, good uh, position, um, we need to come up with new value propositions for the different stakeholders. More funding is needed, so we need to come up with innovative business models. And another issue we need to think about is um, the way in which RDA Global is um, dealing with all the regional initiatives. We see that RDA is being picked up more and more in different parts of the world, and that also um, uh, makes it important to think about the relationship between and, and the roles and responsibilities between RDA Global and, let's say, RDA US, RDA Europe. RDA Germany, for example, where a legal entity is being set up, et cetera, et cetera. So that is another area um, that we really need to think about in a very fundamental way. So that is why Council is now working on a new strategy. And um, Council is, of course, not doing that on its own. Um, there is a lot of um, consultation also going on. And the whole membership of RDA will be involved and already is involved. Um, and we had an interactive session um, plenary session on that in Montreal. So here, very quickly, because I think I'm going to check that I'm running out of time. Yes, my time is up. So here you see uh, very quickly um, the planning of this whole strategy process. Um, you can see that we started this work, that we hope to have um, something to present to membership in March in Berlin. 
and um, finalize um, the new strategy document um, around summer next year and, and start working from it uh, from then onward. And through the whole process, we see membership input and membership engagement. So that about Montreal, if I look forward, um, I can tell you that we will have our next plenary next March in Berlin. And that is going to be an exciting plenary um, again as well, because um, the focus will be on um, the theme from data to knowledge. And um, we will have um, two days of site meetings that are specifically aimed at the relationship between RDA and industry. So um, we have a lot of um, especially German industrial, industrial partners um, interested in this. And um, so that gives a new um, angle and um, um, to the work of RDA. So um, we are all very excited about that. And looking even further away, um, we will have um, in the fall of next year, um, in October, we will have um, the RDA plenary again combined with um, the SciDataCon conference like we had um, two years ago in, um, in Denver. So this will be an international data week that combines SciDataCon, the conference of CoData and the World Data System, with the RDA plenary. So that is going to be a very packed week where we will try to integrate um, the programs of um, these three organizations. And um, this um, week is going to take place in Africa. So it's the first time that RDA will move to Africa and um, the host country will be Botswana. And um, with that, I think I should stop and give the floor to Francois. And here you see some links um, and some um, email addresses if you need any further information um, where you could go to. So I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ingrid. So it's Francois Genova next. Okay, nice to meet you all around the computers. I hope you hear me. So I am, as, I, as you were told, I am the co-chair of the technical advisory board. And so I will give a few hints of how I see the plenary scene from the, from the, from the technical advisory board point of view. So, there are things which are a bit similar to what Ingrid said, but I try to take uh, the technical advisory board point of view. So just to explain you why we have a point of view on the activities in plenaries, uh, before the meeting, the technical advisory board, so the technical advisory board is 12 and now 13 people coming from all around the world, elected people. Uh, before the meetings, we check the session proposals, Eventually, we make uh, suggestions for improvement, in particular to make absolutely sure that the participants of a plenary have enough information about the sessions to choose what they will attend. And then we work on the scheduling. Uh, we have a tab chair, a meeting with the chairs of the groups. And we also have in each of the group, which is working in the RDA as a liaison in TAB. And so the liaison attends the meetings of their groups. If it's not possible, we try to provide a substitute. And we try also when we attend a meeting to provide information about, for instance, evaluation criteria for new groups, lessons learned from other groups, and so on. And then after the meeting, everybody is very tired, but we have another meeting to understand what happen during the plenary and to build a, a common overview of the activities. So the first event we participated in was the chair meeting with TAB. Uh, the chairs organize a meeting uh, twice a year between the plenaries, but we try to meet them at each plenary because we know that many groups will be represented. So we had more than 50 participants this time and we discussed how to describe group activities. This is very important because in particular, RDA members need to know what is going on in the RDA. And also our funders and everybody needs to know. So we work around this. And this also includes how to do to make a roadmap of 
RDA activities, knowing that we don't have many resources to put on that, and how can we do in practice to progress towards a roadmap view of the activities. We also discussed what happened at the previous chair meeting. We discussed beds and also uh, how RDA uh, supports the chair activities, in particular how the secretariat deals with recommendations. If you go to the recommendations page, you will see that there is a very visible DOI now. And if you want to uh, cite an RDA recommendation now, the DOI is very visible and it's easy to so again, uh, Ingrid went through that, and uh, I will try to go uh, in the different categories of groups to, to, to say a few words of what happened in Montreal in particular. So the, the meetings of the groups, the working groups and interest groups, uh, one of the aim is to inform membership about the group, what the groups are doing but also to make progress in activities. And it's not always easy to manage how to share information and also how to have enough time about discussion. So one of the things which is done is to make a color code for each group to inform participants about the fact that the group is beginning or ongoing or closing so that people who participate in the meeting, in the session, uh, have an idea of the kind of input they are expected to do. The session page also points to detailed information about what the group is doing and expects from the meeting. So there is information provided at the start, as a starting point and hopefully meeting notes. And really my recommendation is that you have a look at the meeting session pages of the groups you are interested in because it gives a very good overview of what is going on in the group. And you can use it after. Ah. Uh, the joint sessions, they were only six this time. Last time, they were 13. But this is compensated because they are, groups are invitating other groups to participate in their regular sessions on specific topics. And this can be very efficient on collaboration because it, it can be well focused. I think that what we see is that people in the RDA know better what others are doing and how to take advantage of it. But they were these six sessions with uh, important topics such as water and biodiversity vocabularies, materials, life science and fair, domain repositories to exchange on best practices, machine actionable data management plans, and metadata. So these sessions can have different aims, but they are a place where the groups can meet and discuss together and with the audience. The bird of the feathers, Ingrid already said that uh, this is a vehicle to propose new topics, and we were happy to see 16 of them this time. Last time it was 11. The highest number we had was in Paris with 19, but there were also lots of proposals from French people. And so this was a high because of the local proposals. I think. So the birds of the feathers, it's important to see what is going on and will go on in the RDA. Some of them are a bit, I call them ancillary because it's in support to RDA work. Uh, the discussion about adoption of RDA products, test beds, engaging early career researchers and professionals, and a, a, a meeting proposed by research funders to discuss together, which is interesting also, I mean. There were also discussions of activities outside RDA, which are relevant to it, in some cases to explore possible RDA activities, but in others just to to inform people and get input. So well, one of them which was here for information and getting feedback is the OECD expert group report on the networking uh, uh, data uh, activities uh, worldwide. There was also a meeting organized by EarthCube and another one by a US project which is called Make Data Count to explore if they can expand to get a more global uh, view on this topic. 
There are also both which are here to tackle a very specific topic. Uh, for instance, metadata citation elements or data management records this time. And others are in preparation for a future group proposal. There was one about systems, technologies, and data flow, one about units of measures, another one about blockchains, another one about data versioning, and also one on persistent ID of instruments. So it's interesting to look at what happens at both after they are uh, held in a plenary. So we had 11 in Barcelona, and three gave rise to a group proposal we received in July and August, so before this plenary. Uh, one on disciplinary collaboration framework, another one on sharing recognition and credit, which has the nice name SHARK, and the last one on software source code. So it's important to know that we do not allow twice the same bird of a feather, but there can be progression towards a group proposal, which can be slower than six months, from proposing the idea to writing the case statement. And we have two cases here, data versioning and blockchains. And there are also other cases in which groups have proposed something, and they are still updating their case statement, but they already have a group session. So Ingrid spoke about recommendations already. Um, and adoption, of course. And if we go through the session this time, uh, what happens is that working groups are invited to present their preliminary results after 12 months and their final results after 18 months. And we had six presentations at P10. Uh, array database assessment, which will produce a report. Data type registry number two, which is identifying key elements and building a prototype. And it's important to, to know that they are working to see if they can have an ISO study group. International Materials Resource Registry, which is progressing to, towards building a registry relevant to this disciplinary field. Research data collections, how to act on distributed collections. Research data repository interoperability, which works on primer and recommendations and so on. And also the metadata standards for attribution of physical and digital collections stewardship. So you can have information by going to the, to the meeting page, of course, on, if you need more detailed information on it, any of these topics. So to, to conclude, I think that what we see once again is what we have to manage diversity. There is really a huge diversity of the activities and it goes on. And it makes sense because of a variety of questions to tackle, to enable science data sharing. And also because we all know that uh, RDA members have uh, diverse profiles and interests. So it's interesting to see that we go on with community-driven management of diversity, in particular using overarching groups, which are proposed by the membership. Uh, there is, for instance, interest groups which host many working groups, for instance, in agriculture. And they proposed recently several additional working groups after the first successful one. Uh, data fabrics put technology outcomes together. And we have this new uh, group, which is called Disciplinary Collaboration Frameworks, which intends to become a voice for disciplines in the RDA. So seen from TAB, uh, I think we can conclude that plenaries are really a milestone for RDA activities. Uh, and we see this, for instance, in TAB, because we see group proposals before the plenaries or just after or near it. We had two in July, four in August. And if you remember, it's northern vacation period. This means people are working hard before the plenaries. Two in September, including one update. In Montreal in particular, it's always the case, but it, in Montreal in particular, we felt a very, very, very friendly atmosphere, which was very helped by the way the hosts organized the meeting. 
and as usual, good cooperation, and we also see that most activities are moving on. The plenaries are really an excellent view of the activities and of a vibrant RDA community. If you cannot attend, really have a look at the conference site, even afterwards, because you can see a lot of what happened, and it can bring you up to date on the activities which interest you. It's also a good place to gather good ideas for your own activities, so this is another reason to have a look at the website. And we also see that most groups take full advantage of a face-to-face -face meeting time, even if not all do that. And in some cases, there are more presentations than discussions, but most groups really take advantage of a meeting. And uh, what is linked to the strategy exercise in that, in what I said, is it important that we keep better track of activities and that the roadmap would be very useful, so we will see how to go on with that, but resources are limited by these days. So, I think now I finish on the next one, Berlin, and then Botswana, and then this is where you can find information and, and uh, ask questions and so on, and then it's Amy's turn. Thank you. Thank you, Francois. So uh, next, Amy's turn. Amy doesn't have any slides, but okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm Amy, and I'm a PhD student at Swansea University in the UK. Um, and I'm a health geographer, and I work with GIS, an anonymised routine health system. Um, and I just like to start by saying thank you so much for the opportunity to share my experience of my very first um, RDA plenary in Montreal. Um, so I was fortunate enough to be one of the 10 early career researchers in Europe um, to be awarded the bursary to attend the plenary in Montreal. Um, and I'm really thankful for that and I thoroughly enjoyed my time at the plenary. Um, so I'm just going to share with you um, some, well, what were highlights for me um, uh, while I was at the plenary. Um, so for me, there were several highlights um, throughout the week, and, and the first being um, the diversity of people that I met, um, research interests, job roles, um, and nationality were, were really broad. Um, and as a geographer working in public health research, um, I'm used to attending uh, multidisciplinary conferences and meetings with varied interests and perspectives, but the, plen the plenary was um, on a whole different scale. Um, and I think that this reflects the vision of, of RDA. And I came away from the plenary with a new appreciation for the pathway of research. And I don't know if that's the right word to use, but by this I mean um, before I can analyze any, um, any of the data, the anonymized health data we have here in Swansea, um, it's so important that the data is structured and managed well, that all of the legal requirements are in place. And, that's something that I myself am not directly involved with, but I rely entirely upon that infrastructure to in undertake my research. Um, and I just really enjoy talking with and learning from librarians and particularly people who are interested in data infrastructure. Um, on the first day, I, I really enjoyed hearing from the panel on uh, data policy trends. And there was a discussion about being open and transparent with data. And this was really helpful for me um, to hear about what funders and, and journals are beginning to look for. Um, one, because a focus of my PhD um, is using open source environmental data. Um, and two, because as an early career researcher, it's important for me to begin um, to appreciate what funders and, and publishers are wanting to see in, in applications and papers. So um, I personally found that really, really useful. Um, and I also attended the Women in RDA breakfast. And again, I really enjoyed hearing different perspectives. Um, but what I really appreciated about this breakfast was meeting with women who are further along in their careers than myself and that they're still passionate and excited about their research. And I, I just felt it was a really empowering time together hearing more about the vision and the mission of, of RDA and particularly in 
the context of, of being a woman in research. Um, so I attended a number of different interest groups, but for me, uh, working with anonymized uh, routine health data, the health data interest group and the privacy implications of research data interest group were the most relevant to my own research interests. Um, and again, to keep talking about these different perspectives, I just found that so helpful, um, hearing about the legal side, um, hearing from librarians, and hearing from researchers that are working in different parts of the world, um, talking about the challenges that we, the different challenges that we face, and also the shared challenges that we face. Um, and for the whole three days, it was that breadth of view that I found really insightful, um, really interesting, and, and quite exciting, really. Um, and I'm excited to, um, at the prospect of becoming further involved with the RDA and to be getting involved in a community that are united in their vision to openly share data. Um, and this kind of this resonates with the, the kind of researcher that I am, but also the, the kind of researcher that I want to develop into. Um, so I intend to become more um, involved in both the RDA in the UK and in the international RDA community. And I've joined some of the relevant interest groups, um, and I'm looking for opportunities to build on the connections that I made at the plenary. Um, so I'd just like to finish by saying I'm really looking forward to, um, to being involved in this international discussion and, and looking at exploring uh, potential solutions for the challenges that we face. So thank you very much. All I have to say. Thank you. A lot, uh, Amy, and also Ingrid and Francois. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, please raise your hand via the little icon on the top of the window with the little man that raises his hand, or type your question into the chat window. If you are still thinking about questions, I have one question here at the bottom speakers. So uh, what are your expectations from the next plenary in Berlin? You expect some uh, industrial participation. So wh what kind of plenary will it be? What kind of outcomes you expect? Maybe Francois or Ingrid, you could probably answer this one. Yeah, this is Ingrid. Um, well, what we expect um, from a plenary is, is always very difficult to, to predict, of course. Um, the, um, as it looks now, the, I mean, we are still in, in the early discussions with industry on, on um, the plenary in Berlin, but what I do know is that there is now at the table a, um, a draft program for two days of site meetings with um, industry around all kinds of themes um, that um, across uh, the borders between industry and RDA, so topics that we share. Um, what will come out of that um, as a concrete result still remains to be seen, of course. I think it's a first a big step into um, closer collaboration and, and discussion um, between um, industry and RDA. So that in itself already has, um, I think, a lot of added value, but it's difficult to predict what will be the concrete result and, and where that will go in, in the future. Um, and of course, um, we will again see a lot of um, sessions um, of working groups and interest groups, and um, the sessions are really their working sessions, so um, what comes out of that is that they progress in their um, aim to um, reach the results um, that they um, have envisioned to, to reach. Um, what will also be, I think, in the, in the one of the plenary sessions for sure on the table is um, the strategy of RDA. How um, are we going to change and modify RDA and harness uh, RDA uh, in order to make the organization really sustainable, more sustainable than it is now and more professional and um, also um, make it scalable so that we can accommodate um, further growth of, of the RDA community. So I think that will also be an important topic um, that will be on the table in Berlin. And I don't know whether Francois has something to add to that. Francois, do you have any questions? He 
if not, uh, do you have any other questions? If not, I would like to thank you, Ingrid, Francoise, Amy, and our audience for your time presentations and uh, online presence. Thanks uh, for attending this webinar. I would like to make the announcement of our next webinar to take place on the 27th of November and the topic will be aging, RD aging, data management and sharing practices in management. And we update the list of coming webinars so please check the website and copy the URL. So thank you all and have a nice day. Bye bye.